If you're trying to connect your on-prem network to Azure without breaking the bank, this video is for you. Coming up, we'll see how to build a site-to-site -site VPN between Azure and your local network. Hey everyone, I'm Travis and welcome to Seraltos. In this video, we're going to set up a site-to-site -site VPN between Azure and my home lab. On the Azure side, we'll use a basic VPN gateway SKU. It's the cheapest option available and perfect for our labs and test environments. On the other end, we'll use a Ubiquiti Cloud Gateway Max. The information will also apply to other VPN endpoints. Before that, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Click the bell icon for notifications of new content and check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365 with Intune Management, Hybrid Identities with Windows 80 and Enter ID, and my latest course, A Beginner's Guide to the AZ900, available at udemy.com. Links are below, and thank you channel members, your support is appreciated. Back to it, this video took me a while to get out, not because it's complicated, but because I got sidetracked with travel, work, and upgrading my home lab hardware. But I'm finally ready to dive into it. Let's start with the basics. A virtual private network or VPN allows secure communication over the internet. There are two main types, point to site, where a single user connects to a private network, and site to site, which connects two private networks together. This video focuses on the site to site type. The goal is to build a secure persistent tunnel from an on-premises network to an Azure virtual network. To do that, we need a VPN gateway in Azure. This is Azure's endpoint for the tunnel. Azure offers several VPN gateway SKUs. The more powerful the SKU, the more bandwidth and features you get, but also the higher the price. Some SKUs also support availability zones. And just so you know, Microsoft plans to retire the VPN GW one through five SKU in September of 2026, moving existing SKUs to their AZ equivalent. For this example, we'll use the basic VPN gateway SKU to connect a home lab to Azure. The basic SKU is budget friendly, but comes with limitations like low performance and fewer features. It's great for a lab, but definitely not recommended for production use. Another thing to keep in mind, you can't deploy the basic VPN SKU from the Azure portal. It has to be done using PowerShell or the CLI. I created a PowerShell script to handle that, and we'll go through that step-by-step -step in the demo, and the link is below. The VPN gateway connects to a virtual network in Azure and requires a dedicated subnet called Gateway Subnet. For the basic SKU, that subnet needs to be at least a slash 29. Other SKUs require slash 27 or larger. It's a good idea to make it even bigger so we can scale up in the future. You'll also need a public IP address for the gateway in Azure. And here's where it gets a little bit confusing. The basic public IP SKU in Azure is retiring at the end of September 2025. For a while, the basic VPN gateway could only use the basic IP SKU. That led some people to think the gateway itself was being retired, but that's not the case. The basic VPN gateway is still supported. In fact, the setup we're using today combines a basic VPN gateway with a standard public IP address, so it won't be affected by this change. Let's talk about the lab setup used for the demo. There are two main parts for this demo. First, we'll deploy the Azure basic VPN gateway. Then we'll create a site-to-site -site VPN connection with the Ubiquiti Cloud Gateway located in my lab. Even though the demo uses Ubiquiti gear, most IPsec-based VPN devices follow similar steps. So if you're using a different firewall or router, this should still give you a solid starting point for your own equipment. And if you run into issues, just check your vendor's documentation for specific settings. On the Azure side, the demo starts with a virtual network, a subnet, and a virtual machine to test connectivity. On the home side, my Ubiquiti Cloud Gateway Max lives on a shelf in the basement right next to some gym equipment and books I swear I'm going to read one day. The Cloud Gateway supports two networks, one for the lab traffic and the other for family internet access. The lab network is completely isolated because the family is not too happy when I mess with their internet access. So here's what's coming up. We'll use a script to create the new subnet in the existing virtual network for the VPN gateway. Then the script will deploy the basic VPN gateway with a standard public IP. After that, we'll configure the local network gateway and VPN connection in Azure. The local network gateway defines the on-prem device we're connecting to. The VPN connection contains the encryption settings used to establish the tunnel. Finally, we'll configure the on-prem gateway and test everything to make sure the tunnel works. 
Let's jump in and get started by creating the basic VPN gateway. Here we are in VS Code and PowerShell. We're going to start by creating the basic gateway. We'll need the existing VNet resource group, VNet name, and subnet for the new gateway. Let's hop over to the Azure portal to get that information. And we'll start at the virtual network we're connecting the VPN gateway to. VPN test one for this example. We need the VNet resource group name and the VNet name. We also need an IP address range for the gateway subnet. Let's go to settings subnets. From here, we can see the existing subnets, only one for this example. We need a range of IP addresses in the VNet's address space that don't overlap with any existing subnets. The VPN gateway subnet has to be at least a slash 29, but the recommendation is to use a slash 27 or larger for the subnet. That provides IP addresses for future growth. This example will use 10.0.200.0 slash 24. Next, let's go to address space. From here, we can identify the address spaces used for this virtual network. Make note of the address spaces in this list. Only one for this example. Knowing these address spaces is going to be helpful when we set up the site-to-site -site connection later. Let's go back to VS Code. We also need a name for the new gateway. There's information about the parameters in the script, as well as an example of a command to run the script. Link to the script is below. The script will use a standard public IP address by default. At the time of recording, we still have the option to use the basic IP, but the basic IP address SKU will be retired at the end of September 2025. If the basic IP address SKU is needed, set standard IP to false. I suggest leaving it to the default true for a standard public IP address SKU, unless there's a reason to use a basic public IP. If you leave it as default and use a standard, you won't have to change it later. The script will verify the required PowerShell modules are installed and that you're logged into Azure. Make sure the account has rights to create a new subnet, public IP address, and gateway in the resource group. Also, I tried with an external account that had privileges, but got an error. If you see a similar error, verify you're logged in with an account native on the tenant. It's gonna set the gateway name next. It has to be gateway subnet. Don't change that variable. It will also use the location of the VNet. Then it creates the subnet. It creates the standard or basic IP address. It creates the gateway IP address configuration. And finally, it creates the gateway. Let's run the script using the values we collected. We're running the script, passing in the existing resource group name and the existing VNet name, as well as the name for the new gateway and the address prefix used for the gateway subnet. This will take a few minutes to finish. The video will pause here until it's done. That finished. If you ran into an issue and the script failed, you may need to manually remove the public IP address, gateway subnet, and the gateway before running the script again. Now, if we go to the virtual network in the Azure portal, under setting subnets, we now have the gateway subnet. And don't forget, if you don't see what you're expecting, make sure you refresh. Let's go to the resource group next, and we can get there from the VNet overview page. It shows our public IP and virtual network gateway. Let's look at the public IP address. It shows we're using a standard SKU. It also gives us the public IP address. Make a note of this public IP address. We'll need it to configure the site-to-site -site VPN later. If we go back to the resource group and into the gateway, it shows the SKU is basic, and it also provides that same public IP address. That is how to create a basic VPN gateway with a standard SKU IP address. Now that we have the VPN gateway in place, let's configure the Azure side of the site-to-site -site IPsec tunnel. To do this, we'll need the public IP address and subnets on the local network. The local network refers to the other side of the VPN tunnel, your office, for example. We can get the public IP address by going to a site like IP Chicken from the local network. You can also likely find it in the VPN device. And we need the subnets that exist on the local network. This example uses the 192.168.200.0 slash 24 block. Yours will likely be different. Let's get started with creating the site to site tunnel by going to hybrid connectivity in the Azure portal. 
if we go to VPN gateways and VPN gateways under that, there's the gateway we created in the previous step. Next, let's go to set up VPN gateway. This gives us the steps for creating a VPN connection. Step one is to create the VNet gateway. We did that already. Step two is to create the local network gateway. Again, local refers to the on-premises side of the site-to-site -site tunnel. And the third step is to create the VPN connection. We can also create all these from under VPN gateway. The local network gateway defines the local network or the other side of the connection, things like the public IP address and the subnets that exist in that network. The VPN connection connects the VPN gateway with your local device. We define IPsec settings within the VPN connection. Let's configure the local side of the connection in Azure by going to the local network gateway. And we'll create a new local network gateway. Select the subscription and resource group. It would make sense to put this in the same resource group as the virtual network and the gateway we previously created. Select the region that should be the same as the virtual network. Give it a name. I'll use home lab for this example. Provide the public IP address or a fully qualified domain name if you have one for your VPN device. If you have an internet plan that doesn't provide static public IP addresses and that IP address ever changes, it will bring the tunnel down. So you'll have to remember to go in and update those public IP addresses. In that case, consider using a dynamic DNS service along with a host name. By the way, sometimes I get comments about the security of sharing my public IP. I can assure you that this will not be my public IP when you watch this. Under address spaces, we'll add the subnets that exist in the on-premises network. This is how the VPN connection determines what traffic to send through the tunnel. This example will use the local network range of 192.168.200.0 slash 24. Add additional subnets if needed. We'll go next to advanced. The basic SKU does not support BGP. We can go to review and crate. Once validation passes, crate. We'll give that a minute to finish. That's done. Now that we have our local network gateway defined, we'll go back to hybrid connectivity to create the VPN connection. Go to VPN Connections under VPN Gateway and create a new connection. The VPN connection defines the IPsec tunnel between the Azure VPN Gateway and your on-premises VPN device. Select the Subscription and Resource group. Here again, it makes sense to put it in the same resource group as the VNet and VPN Gateway. The connection type is Site-to-Site -site IPsec. Give it a name. This example will use Azure to Home Lab. And put it in the same region as the VNet. Go next to settings, select the virtual network gateway, the one we configured with PowerShell. That defines the Azure side of the connection. And then select the local network gateway. That defines the on-premises side of the connection. Next, we can use a pre-shared key or a key vault certificate. This example will use a pre-shared key. Enter a value, and you will need this for the other side of the connection as well. Leave the IKE protocol and the rest of the settings set to default. We don't have a lot of options to adjust these settings on the basic VPN SKU. We'd need to move to a standard SKU to modify these settings. Go to tags, add tags as needed, and go to review and create. And once validation passes, click create. We'll give this a minute to finish. That finished, let's go back to hybrid connectivity and go to VPN connections. If you don't see the connection you just created, you may need to remove the filter that's applied by default. The VPN connection we just created shows the status of unknown. Let's fix that. The next step is to configure the local VPN device. This is the part where you may need to find help from your VPN device manufacturer. The example in this video uses a Unify Cloud Gateway Max. IPsec tunnels are pretty standard and hopefully this example lines up with whatever you're using in your environment. We'll need the public IP address of the Azure VPN gateway we previously created, as well as the address space for all VNets that will communicate over the tunnel. That includes the address spaces from any peered virtual networks that will use the tunnel. Before we proceed with configuring the on-prem side, let's open the new connection and select Download Configuration. Select the device vendor, family, and firmware that matches your device. If your device doesn't show, you can select something close or download the generic samples option. This example uses Ubiquity. 
Edge router is the only option for device family. In this example, we'll use route-based VTI because we're not using BGP. We'll download the configuration. Let's open the file, download and review the settings. I'm not using the Ubiquiti Edge router in this demo. I'm using the Cloud Gateway Max, but the configuration gives me settings required by my environment. If your model is listed, then download that and follow the instructions to set up your device. If you find something close, use that or the generic samples option. But because we're connecting to the same basic VPN gateway, your settings should be similar to what we're using in this example. Let's go to the local device, the Ubiquiti Cloud Gateway for this example. And again, if you're using a different VPN device, try to match the settings as close as you can and consult the vendor documentation if you run into issues. I'm gonna go into Settings VPN and then go to the Site to Site VPN tab. The tunnel type is IPsec. Make sure IPsec is selected. Give the connection a name. We'll use the same name we used for the Azure connection. Update the pre-shared key to match the Azure connection. They have to match. This is what authenticates the connection between the two VPN devices. And yes, that will change as well by the time you watch this video. Leave the local IP address set to the local network WAN address. For the remote IP or host name, enter the public IP address of the Azure VPN gateway. For the VPN method, we're using route-based. The Azure basic VPN gateway is also route-based. We'll leave tunnel IP off, and for remote networks, we have to define every IP address space on the opposite side of the VPN tunnel. This is how the gateway knows how to route traffic over the tunnel. This example uses 10.0.0.0 slash 16. And I have to click add. You can add multiple subnets to define all connected VNets. If you're using an Azure Virtual Network Hub and Spoke configuration, for example. For this example, we'll set advanced to manual and select IKE V2 to match the Azure connection. The rest of the settings come from that configuration file. Encryption is AES-256. Hash is SHA-1. The DH group is two, and the lifetime is 3600. We'll set the same for ESP phase two. The rest can be left at the default value. We'll click add and go back to the VPN connections. The status may take a minute to update. Let's try to send some data over the VPN tunnel to see if it works. This is a server on my local subnet. Let's try to ping a virtual machine on the other side. The first try failed. In my experience, we have to send data over the tunnel and give it a couple minutes before it connects. After some time, I was able to successfully ping the desktop in Azure from my home lab. Let's go back to the local cloud gateway. From the local cloud gateway, it shows online or connected. I did have to refresh the screen for that to show. Now let's go back to the Azure portal. Here's our connection in the Azure portal and it shows not connected. But if we open the connection, the status now shows connected. It looks like the UI is having an issue with updating. That's all there is to it. We now have a VPN connection between a basic Azure VPN gateway with a standard public IP address and an on-premises Ubiquiti gateway. And that's it. Now we've got a secure site-to-site -site VPN between Azure and the on-prem network using the basic VPN gateway. If this helps, please hit like and subscribe to the channel and leave your comments if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.